welcome to Self Advocacy in Action. I'm your host, Gwen Squire, and this is my friend, Catherine McLaughlin, and she is an author, and she also teaches classes on sexuality and people with disabilities. Hello, Catherine. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Gwen? I'm good. Thanks. It's good to see you again. You too. Um, so um, I think I'm going to start with my usual questions. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I, I currently live in New Hampshire and I'm a sexuality educator and trainer, like you mentioned. And I grew up in Ithaca, New York, so I'm an upstate New Yorker. Um, and I love the work I do, and I'll tell you more about that. But um, I like to swim. I'm, I'm doing a hundred miles, not a hundred miles at once swim. I'm doing a hundred mile swim over a year. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah so nice. I'm, I'm up to like 50 now. It's a no, lot you like to laps. swim. Yeah, you love to swim then, I take it, yes? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I used to love to too, yes. Yeah. I felt like free in the water, you know, because exactly. you didn't have your wheelchair. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Totally. So anyway, um, tell me a little bit about your book that you've written, the title and, you know. The curriculum that you received, yep. right? Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah, yeah. Years ago, I worked with some self-advocates in Vermont, Green Mountain yeah. Self-Advocates. And um, we wrote this curriculum because there weren't a lot of curriculum around for people with intellectual developmental disabilities around sexuality. So I thought, okay, I'll write right. something. Mm -hmm. And I went to them and they said, nothing about us without us. We're, we want to be in charge of this curriculum. Mm -hmm. Self-advocates in action. And yeah. um, so they helped design, you know, create some of the content. And then they also said, we want to be one of the teachers of the curriculum as well. And mm -hmm. so that's when I met you, Gwen, was the training to train self-advocates and professional teams to be sexuality educators. So that's, that's really how it started. And um, I've, had the, I've had the opportunity to do some work in Michigan and now New York. Um, and trying to train self-advocates to be leaders in this field of sexuality education. It is awesome, I think, mm -hmm. because I think we're probably the best people to help teach it. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. I remember when I was growing up, it was taboo to talk about it, having, doing, having sex and being having a disability and all that. Oh, yeah. And it really, in a lot of ways, still is. You know, it's moving in the right direction, but... Yeah, a lot of people don't think people with disabilities are sexual people, so they don't give them information. And, yes, and, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So tell me, um, what are some of the topics you cover at your trainings and, and your book that you wrote about? Yeah, so when I work directly with people with disabilities, I, it's a, it's, there's 22 lessons, so there's lots and lots of topics. But really starting out with things like, who am I? you know, our identity, and then what are the different kinds of relationships that we're in? Um, and how, you know, how do we touch in those relationships? How do we, what kind of topics do we talk about? So a lot of that kind of social norm kind of things, right. and public and private, and what's okay to talk about in certain places and all that. And then we move into, you know, more into relationships. So how do you meet people for, to create friendships with? as well as um, decision-making and communication skills. So lots of really great skills for being in all kinds of relationships. And then you move into more of the, well, do you wanna be in a sexual romantic relationship with someone, which is another kind of relationship. And then how do you do that? How do you communicate in relationships? Um, what do you do if it's not, if the relationship is starting to feel like it's unhealthy? or abusive, or how do you, what do you do? And then we move into more about sexual acts and sexual feelings that people have. And how do you, what are all the possibilities for people? And how do you protect yourself from unplanned pregnancy or sexually transmitted mm -hmm. protection? And how do you, you know, learn about consent and what does consent mean? And right. so um, it covers everything really. Okay, that sounds very cool. And I did enjoy your training a lot. Great. It was I, th I thought it was cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, and I'm and I'm looking forward to teaching it too myself. 
I'm looking forward to hearing how it goes. And yeah, because I'm looking forward to, you know, dispelling some of those myths about how we can't do this or do that. Right. Exactly. Sexually, you know, and have those kinds of feelings. Yep. You know, right. So and then to and also to be teaching it too. Like that really, exactly that changes people's view. Like what? You're your sexuality educator? Oh yeah. You know, like exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So how do some of the students that you, you know, that you've worked with, how do they, um, what do they think of your, te- your trainings? Do you get a sense of what, how they're doing with it and if they're okay with it? And yeah, yeah. I mean, we try to make it um, so that people can, you know, participate at whatever level they want to participate. There's no pressure. Um, mm-hmm. They, they respond really well to it and feel like they're learning a lot. Um, you know, some people, that I've worked with, you know, the, they might be 50 years old and they don't know how babies are made. And so oh, wow. they hear, they're just, wow, you know, that's amazing. And like, I know yeah. it really is amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah. So I think uh, that's always really, you know, to, to be giving, I feel like I'm giving people um, information that makes them more comfortable with, you know, who they are and in their, in their lives and, um, and get the positive parts of, out of relationships and less negative. So it's, it's very, it's really rewarding for sure. That's great. Um, yeah. Okay. Now the opposite, how do the parents react to all of this? Like you said, you've worked with them as well, right? I, I have. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm working with a parent, like I'm doing a parent workshop or something like that, right? um, Mm -hmm. those go really well because the parents who want to be there are there, right? They're like, all right, help me talk to my child about this. So they're open and, you know, wanting to do things, but sometimes parents are really afraid of Mm -hmm. um, what might happen if we teach if, if the child learns about sexuality, you know, that they right. get taken advantage of. And so they're often, they often can be very fearful about it. Um, and so I try to talk to them about just the benefits of sexuality education and how much right. it can help someone. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. And yeah. yeah. And sort of try to get more buy-in from them. And, and I could, you know, some parents will not you know, go there. They don't think it's a good idea and maybe someday they will. But um, I think a lot of parents really appreciate it because they don't know quite how to teach it. And right. like yes, you said, exactly. you know, no like one my mom did. Right, right. Right. My mom did not. She had my sister give me the talk. Right. Exactly. So, so, so yeah, a lot of people are uncomfortable. So, you know, having a class really helps parents too. Cause they're like, great. You can teach my child about all this. Right. Yeah. Cause I'm not comfortable. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I think one of the things too, that parents worry about is that I'm going to teach my values. Um, and so I always let them know that I just give facts, um, information. I don't share my values about what I think they should do or not do that. That's mm-hmm. really the parent's role. Um, right. And that really helps parents um, mm-hmm. feel more comfortable. Like, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. We did talk about that during class, you know, yeah. about how if we're going to teach it, we need to keep our own views at bay. Exactly. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So um, the training that you were at is really about how do you teach this topic in a way that's, that works and is effective. And so one of the things is to figure out how to manage your values, right? So we all have values about sexuality. There's nothing wrong with having values, but we can't impose them on other people. Um, and so in the training, as you remember, we did this you know, worksheet of which scenarios are we okay with or not okay with yeah. to get clear about what our values are. And it helps us if we're clear about our values, then it's easier for us to manage them. But if we're not clear about them, something might come up and then all of a sudden our value comes out of our mouth. So it helps us be more prepared, really. Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. So um, you were saying you've traveled all over. Is it just in this state or have you gone to other states, right? You've I gone do, to other yeah. states. Yeah, I, ha- I haven't traveled 
the first time I traveled again was when I met you in Buffalo. Um, since the pandemic, I haven't done any traveling, but I've been able to do a lot of it before that. And um, I really, I, I enjoy that a lot, just meeting new people and seeing new places. And um, so I think, and I, I do think that there's, there are a lot of people in this country and other countries that are ready to start addressing this and talking about it with people with developmental disabilities. Um, so there's a lot of self-advocates that are interested and professionals. And I feel like things are going to, we're going to start to see some change where maybe some of the yes. statistics will get better, you know? Right. So what are your hopes for teaching this? Like for teaching, I know we've said that you want to teach people to be more comfortable with sexuality, but is there something else besides that with the parents and the, you know, I know you've taught staff as well, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So do you have like different hopes for them as well or? Yeah, I mean, I that? think, yeah, I mean, I think um, my hope for people, other people like parents or staff or self-advocates that are teaching that they, um, you know, learn how to talk about this too. So it's not just one person that's talking about it, but all of these people are starting to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's how the things change, right? You know, all of a sudden yes. there's more people doing something and then it tips to that's the norm and not talking about it is not norm, is not norm. the norm, yes. you know? So I think yes. that's part of it, that enough people are comfortable that we're having these conversations. Um, and then for people with disabilities, that they understand that they are sexual people. And if they want to be in relationships, they have the right to be in relationships and mm -hmm. um, they can be really positive and wonderful. Um, and so I think that's, you know, many people want that in their lives. Not everyone, but if they do, I, I think people should be able to have those things in their lives. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. My next question is, if someone would like to receive sexual aid training, how would they connect with you? Yeah, so I, I have a small business called Elevate Us Training, which is E-L-E-V-A-T-U-S training.com. Yes. And mm -hmm. um, I do have a lot of free resources on my website, too. So if anyone wants to learn more, there's information on it. But there's also lots of information on trainings that that I can do and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing as well. So that, that would be probably a good place to start if someone's okay. interested in learning more. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, what are your personal hopes and dreams for yourself though? Like, do you have any plans to just travel for yourself or, you know? Yeah, um, I think, uh, well, I think my personal, like, well, it's not really, I don't know. My goal is that every state in this country will have uh, self-advocates teaching sexuality. And I'd love awesome. to be part of that and make yes. that happen. So that's, you know, personal. Um, but also I think just like, you know, um, we were talking about, I, I mean, I want to become a better and better trainer, you know, mm -hmm. and, and learn more. And, but I also feel like I'm ready to, um, I mean, I have a disability myself, so I, right. I, um, you know, I have some experience with disability, not, uh, you know, not everybody's is different, but, um, right. so I want people to look at people with disabilities as humans, yes, um, and, including myself mm -hmm. and to, um, yeah, I mean, I think, and get rid of that stigma around sexuality. Oh, I for agree. everyone but in yes particular. I totally agree yeah yes yeah because like I said earlier my mom's my mom told my sister to do it and she said when you can't have sex and you can't have kids because of your disability and I was just like whoa I don't whoa. believe that's true but okay oh yeah exactly yeah we talked about that remember yeah but that, that was just their was reaction it. to it they didn't know how to deal with it right so and when that yeah. and and even though um you know you and I are working towards helping people with disabilities have better lives and healthy relationships and all that. I also think it just helps everyone, you know, a staff member who doesn't have a disability. Right. Starts learning like, oh, huh, 
maybe it's okay to talk about this with my kids, or maybe it's okay to talk about this with my partner, or, you know, like it, it, it's, it, the focus is disability because there's such a lack of education for people with disabilities, but I think it, it has ripple effects, you know, it touches lots of people. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you. It was great to see you again. It was great to see you too. Thank you for watching. Remember to hit that bell so you know when our latest video drops. Also, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and you could reach us on our landing page at essayinaction.com. That's essayinaction.com.